In 2019, Lenovo announced it will be the first to make a 5G laptop with Qualcomm's Windows on Snapdragon platform. A whole year later, the company finally started selling the Flex 5G, which is available via Verizon for a whopping $1,400. Why is it so expensive? Does it have superpowers? Well, if you consider long battery life and 5G support superpowers, then sure, yeah, the Flex 5G has them. It uses the Snapdragon 8 CX chipset, which is similar to the one found in Microsoft's Surface Pro X and the Galaxy Book S. But like every Snapdragon PC out there, this laptop suffers from app compatibility problems and buggy performance. I've been spoiled by the thin and light notebooks I've been testing lately, like Samsung's Galaxy Book Flex and the HP Elite Dragonfly. In comparison, the Lenovo Flex 5G feels quite chunky. If the HP laptop is a graceful dragonfly and the Galaxy Book Flex is an elegant butterfly, then the Flex 5G is a dull, unremarkable moth. It's bigger and heftier and nowhere near as pretty. Its dark gray silver color looks dated, while the 0.58 inch profile and 2.97 pound footprint really weigh it down. Part of the reason the Flex 5G is heavier is simply because it is a larger laptop than the competition. As one of the first laptops supporting millimeter wave 5G, the Flex has limited competition. Add its Snapdragon 8 CX chipset and there's basically no other computer to compare it with. The most obvious rivals are the Surface Pro X, which uses a similar CPU and offers LTE instead of 5G, and the Galaxy Book S, which we've yet to review. HP also sells a version of its Elite Dragonfly Ultra Portable with 5G, but that uses Intel processors. The Flex has a 14-inch screen compared to the 13-inch panels on the Surface Pro X and the Galaxy Book S and the HP Elite Dragonfly. That bigger size should mean it has more room for ports, but on the Flex 5G, you will only find a pair of USB-C sockets on the left, as well as a power button and a headphone jack on the right. Even the much sleeker Galaxy Book Flex offers three USB-C ports and an onboard S Pen. I guess the Flex's 5G antennas take up a lot of space. I do appreciate that Lenovo included a physical switch on the right edge to quickly turn on airplane mode though. I'm also glad that the bezels surrounding the display are fairly slim, so at least that part feels like a machine made for 2020 rather than 2018, like the Snapdragon 835 powered Asus Novago. The Flex 5G's 14 inch Full HD display is decent. It won't knock your socks off, but it is crisp enough that I could make out individual strands of fur on a sloth in a wildlife video. The Surface Pro X has a sharper resolution, but I haven't really noticed a significant difference. When I watched the trailer for Wonder Woman on the Flex 5G, Diana's golden lasso and Chris Pine's shockingly blue eyes also popped. The 400 nit screen was adequate indoors, but it was kind of hard to read under direct sunlight when I took it out hunting for 5G. The Flex 5G's speakers flanking the keyboard could also be better. I barely heard any bass in The Weeknd's Blinding Lights or Lizzo's Truth Hurts, and generally, songs sounded tinny. The Surface Pro X also suffers from similar audio issues, as do some XPS machines, so this is a fairly common problem with laptops, unfortunately. As with most Lenovo notebooks, the Flex 5G has a very good keyboard, though it's not as deep or cushy as those on the company's ThinkPads. Every key here is generously sized and the layout is evenly spaced. Now I spent most of my quarantine on a smaller 13 inch laptop, so it took my fingers a while to adjust to this wider layout, but everything I needed was within reach. The Flex 5G's trackpad is similarly roomy, although sometimes it feels a little sluggish. The cursor doesn't feel as smooth or snappy as on the Galaxy Book Flex, but I had no issues with multi-finger gestures like pinch to zoom or switching apps. To the far right of the trackpad is the laptop's fingerprint sensor, which makes for convenient authentication. It works as promised and offers an alternative to the IR camera above the display for Windows Hello logins. Both biometric login options are fast, so you can choose whichever you prefer. The most fascinating feature of the Flex 5G is the Snapdragon 8 CX chipset that keeps it running. It's similar to the Qualcomm Microsoft SQ1 chipset that powers the Surface Pro X, and the technical differences aren't very clear. The 8 CX is supposed to provide 
extreme performance for Qualcomm's Windows on ARM computers and is meant to go against Intel's Y series for thin and light notebooks. In addition to the Snapdragon processor, the Flex 5G also comes with the same 8 gigs of RAM that Surface Pro X offers, although Lenovo provides a 256 gig SSD, while Microsoft's only has 128 gigs at the base level. The Flex 5G was mostly capable of managing my usual workload, until it wasn't. After I drained the battery on our video rundown test and restarted the laptop, getting all my Chrome tabs and apps back up and running took an excruciating 10 minutes. I just wanted to get back into Google Docs to address some edits or get Gmail open to clear my inbox, but each tab took what felt like minutes to load. Even apps that weren't reliant on an internet connection like Events Viewer or File Explorer took forever to start. This was not the always-on experience that Qualcomm and Microsoft promised, and was noticeably slower than other Snapdragon laptops that I've tested. I also ran into odd little delays here and there, like an occasional 2 or 3 second stall when I was alt-tabbing between windows, or images just not loading when I double-clicked them in File Explorer. But these little hiccups aren't as frustrating as my biggest problem with Windows on ARM, which is confusing and incomplete app compatibility. I've complained about this ever since I reviewed the first Snapdragon PC. Since then, Microsoft and Qualcomm have done a lot to make Windows on ARM better, like improving Chrome performance and building 64-bit support. I basically live in Chrome, and the browser does feel more stable overall, and the battery life does seem better. But the problem, as always, comes when you need to install less popular apps. When I was setting up the Flex 5G, I encountered a snag almost immediately. Handbrake, one of the apps we used to benchmark performance, wouldn't install, saying it required a 64-bit system and that my PC was only 32-bit. I also tried installing the 64-bit version of Slack and couldn't, although the 32-bit version worked. It's infuriating, because according to the system's About Your PC page, the Flex 5G runs a 64-bit operating system on an ARM-based processor. Most of our usual Windows benchmarks also aren't compatible here. This is a serious problem that Microsoft needs to work on, because it's crippling the entire platform, including the Surface Pro X. I understand that getting widespread app compatibility is hard, but the messaging needs to be clearer. And more importantly, don't lie to the user. If 64-bit apps won't work, don't call this a 64-bit operating system. So app compatibility sucks, but the Flex 5G does have its merits. One of the biggest highlights is right there in his name, 5G connectivity. Lenovo announced it was making a 5G laptop with Qualcomm back in June 2019, but took a year to actually launch the thing. The company probably needed the extra time to figure out how to get its 5G antennas in the system. The Flex 5G works with both millimeter wave and sub-6 technologies for up to 2 gigabit per second downloads over 5G. And while 5G coverage is still pretty sparse, you'll get plenty speedy service over gigabit LTE the rest of the time. Our view unit came with Verizon service, and I was able to rely on LTE for all of my work. Note, Verizon is our parent company but has no control over editorial content. I downloaded benchmarks, program installers, and even had a four-way video conference without any speed or image quality issues. The problem with Verizon's ultra-wideband 5G network is that coverage still isn't comprehensive. According to the carrier's maps, I'd have to cross the street or walk down the block for 5G, but even when I went out hunting for a signal, I never found one. It's nice that Lenovo was able to build support for the super-fast millimeter wave technology that Verizon's network relies on, but I'm not sure the trade-off in size and weight was worth it. At least the company didn't compromise on battery life, though. My gosh, the battery life on this thing. The multi-day runtime claims here are true. I could generally use the Flex 5G for a whole workday and part of another on a single charge. Since I haven't been working outside much, I haven't connected the Flex to 5G, but it's fair to expect that that would ding the battery life a bit. On our battery test, the Flex 5G hit an impressive 16 hours and 47 minutes, beating every other laptop we've tested this year. 
In second place is the Dell XPS 13 with a 1555 runtime, and the Flex 5G only has a slightly more generous 60 watt hour battery compared to Dell's 56 watt hour cell. The Flex 5G delivers on its two biggest draws, fast cellular speeds and long battery life. But these days, few people are traveling, and the need for a long-lasting machine that will stay online while on the go is minimal. Plus, Windows on ARM still needs a lot of work. Also, the much prettier Surface Pro X starts at $999, and even after adding the keyboard, its total of $1200 is still cheaper than the Flex. The Galaxy Book Flex starts at $1,300, but it uses a more powerful Intel Core i7 chipset, has an onboard S Pen, and a nice QLED screen. Sure, neither of these machines supports 5G or even LTE in the Samsung laptop's case, but $1,400 is a lot to pay for something that might not run every app you'll need. And that's not counting the extra $15 to $30 a month you'll have to fork over for a data plan for the laptop. If you wait till next year to buy a 5G laptop, not only will there be better coverage, but the device will likely be thinner and lighter too. The Flex 5G is an adequate machine, but it's not worth buying during a global pandemic and recession. For more in-depth reviews on always connected laptops or just plain old regular laptops and smartphones and wearables, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And as always, thank you for watching.